Hi, I'm Melanie West. And I'm Andrew Dina. And today we'll be discussing paper-based microfluidics. And so the reason why we chose this topic is mainly because of its biomedical applications in developing countries. And uh, the deliverable needs for these devices are summed up pretty well by a World Health Organization acronym called ASSURED. And so the devices need to be affordable, sensitive, specific, user-friendly, rapid and robust, equipment-free, and deliverable to end users. So we'll be focusing on three fabrication methods, plasma treatment, inkjet printing, and wax printing. And the fundamental principle of paper base is to pattern um, hydrophilic and hydrophobic contrast on a sheet of paper to create the micron scale capillary channels. And so the capillary action reduces the need for external forces in liquid transport, and so that's how we're able to maintain the equipment-free portion. The first fabrication method is plasma treatment. And so it's a two-step fabrication process where we chemically modify the entire fiber surface, uh, where the patterning agent reacts with the hydroxyl groups of the cellulose and making it hydrophobic. And then the second step is to selectively dehydrophobize for the channels. And so um, some of the advantages are you can use cheap patterning agents. AKD is one of them, alkyl ketene dimer. Um, another advantage is labs with plasma cleaners can replicate a few patterns. However, the disadvantages are that it requires different masks, the hydrophilic areas are exposed to polymers and solvents, and you're unable to produce freestanding hydrophobic patterns. The next fabrication process is inkjet printing. And so this is a one-step fabrication process where uh, the surface of the paper is chemically modified and then you selectively hydrophobize for the channels. An advantage to this is produce massive devices fast and simply. You can also use cheap patterning agents and the reagents are easily inkjet printed. However, the disadvantages are that it requires custom inkjet printers, which can be fairly costly, and the hydrophilic areas are exposed to polymers and solvents. Wax printing is a two-step process where wax is printed onto the filter paper and then placed in the oven for the wax to melt into the paper. An advantage to this is that it's extremely simple and fast to fabricate. Another advantage is Wax printing does not require any special treatments of the paper and that the hydrophilic wax channels are not exposed to any polymers or solvents. There are a few disadvantages though to wax printing. The first is the expense of the wax printer. Another small disadvantage is the extra heating step required for wax penetration into the paper. The most crucial disadvantage though to wax printing is the difficulty of design due to wax spreading. Unlike other fabrication methods, the wax not only flows vertically, but also laterally. Applications of micropads are currently very limited because they are still a fairly new concept. The first micropad in design was for bioanalysis, which was based on enzymatic reaction of small molecular dyes. The most well-known example is litmus paper used to estimate the pH value of a solution. Some micropads are starting to be used in urine analysis, which is based on quantitative calorimic detection. A limitation to micropads is simple is sample retention and delivery. Basically, it has been noted that the volume of the sample that reaches the detection zone is much smaller than the total volume within the device. Also, since the channels are exposed to the environment, evaporation during transport leaves a 50% efficiency. Hydrophobic barrier strength also has shown to be a limitation. Samples with a lower surface tension than the critical value can lead to channel penetration resulting in reduction of volume tested or cross-contamination. Another limitation is that micropads require fairly high concentrations to properly analyze. Micropads are still in early stages of development, so some future perspectives of research are in alternate papers and materials that offer better performance such as more effective sample transport. Some research is being done on building micropads with a 3D paper design that will allow for lateral as well as vertical flows. Another future perspective is incorporating professional diagnostics at remote locations. One example is telemedicine where a portable phone or device able to take a picture of the micropad is sent to a physician for expert analysis. The concept introduces many limitations on, this own, on its own but holds high possibilities for offering simple medical diagnostics to developing countries. Novel signal displays is also a great future perspective. 
where the results are displayed as text rather than dye colors. Thank you very much. Thanks for watching.